Now that we have done the secondary growth in the dicot stem, we have seen the four different steps which were taking place and how and what was taking place at the anatomical level which brought about that increase in the girth of a stem. We have to know a few more terms which are associated with the, that particular aspect of our anatomical study and of course it is the secondary growth. Now you might have heard of the term bark. Right? Not the bark which uh, is the sound produced by the dogs, the bark which is present in the tree, the tree bark that we often have heard and uh, certain people have read that bark aspect in their historical studies that in the beginning the tree bark was used for making papers and the material on which the in, uh, things were written. So we are going to consider that part and uh, because it has nothing to do with history and because it is formation that takes place by some or other physiological activity inside the plant we are going to see the anatomy of that word bark and don't confuse it with the bark that dogs do not the barking of dog this bark is the bark that you often if you have seen old trees it is easier to peel off the skin and that particular thing is known as bark next is uh, the term lenticels you must have seen if you have seen a bark you must have noticed that the bark is broken at certain places that uh, those pores basically that breaking up of the bark formation of pores those pores are known as lenticels again we are going to observe what these lenticels are if we have to see the anatomy of the plant itself and lastly we are going to see because we are dealing with secondary growth because in secondary growth the primary aspect was secondary xylem and because I told you in the beginning that xylem is also known as wood so we are going to see the two types of woods that are present one is heartwood and other is sapwood now you can relate it with the furniture wooden furniture that you have in your house there are certain woods which get infested by microorganisms or insects and are destroyed in some time and there are certain woods which the uh, seller would have told you that this is the best wood, this is not going to be infested by insects, this would stay for a longer time. So basically we are going to see the reason behind the carpenter or the seller telling you that why that wood is not going to get infested, that wood would be heartwood and uh, coming to that topic we will see which out of these two woods that durable wood would be and wood would be wood. W O U L D would be and rather I would say which would it will be and uh, we are going to see what would be the reason behind getting such a durable wood. So keeping aside the practical usages coming back to the anatomy let us see what is a bark. Now you need to recall what we had studied in secondary growth we will again start from the center point of the trunk tree trunk and see that what all tissues we had now bark is also a type of tissue which is present in the periderm now remember the term periderm it was formed by three components where we had talked about cork cambium secondary cortex and cork of course and this periderm has a tissue known as bark which is all the components which comprises of all the components that are beyond the vascular cambium. Now we are going to start from the center and see what all bark will comprise of. The center had supposedly the pith, very reduced, highly crushed pith. Then we had highly reduced, I am going to write it in a little bit greater words pith is highly reduced then we had highly reduced primary xylem then we had huge portion of secondary xylem which is responsible for crushing all these uh, uh, pith cells and primary xylem cells there is a great quantity of secondary xylem which is profusely being formed by the vascular cambium now what is forming it is the vascular cambium we have started from the center of the trunk and are moving outwards towards the epidermis. Whatever would lie beyond the vascular cambium as we move outwards would form the bark. So that part of the periderm which comprises all the tissues 
beyond the vascular cambium. Now, try to recall what was beyond vascular cambium. Again, a highly crushed primary phloem. Then, secondary phloem, which is again crushed. Then, we had... Why all these things are highly crushed? Because this part is crushing everything. This is growing at a very rapid rate. This is being produced at a very rapid rate and it is crushing everything else and forming the maximum component that is known as wood. So, we have secondary phloem. Then, we have secondary cortex which is living and it is having parenchymatous cells. Beyond secondary cortex, what did we have? Secondary cortex was produced by cork cambium, another type of cambium which was secondary in origin. And after cork cambium, we had cork. And on this cork, over this cork, we had epidermis. So, all the tissue that lies beyond the vascular cambium, this particular part, one, two, three, four and five. These five components are part of bark. This you have to remember. All right. So what is bark that you come to know? That it is the tissue present in the periderm which lies beyond the vascular cambium in a root or a stem which has undergone secondary growth. Okay. Now we have the second term that is lenticels. Now considering this aspect, you know that there are uh, cells in the epidermis and because everything is growing at such a rapid rate, it is bound to break. All right. Now, how, how does it break? It breaks in such a fashion that the outer layer of epidermis is going to break at certain places. And because the rampant growth is taking place inside, what happens is we have cork cambium over here. All right. This pore is known as lenticel. This particular pore which is caused by breaking up of the epidermis within the secondary growth process that is known as lenticel and you would find many lenticels in the bark of a tree and th this is the cord cambium it gives rise to secondary cortex these are the parenchymatous cells which are growing inwards and outwards you have cork dead cells all right. Now, over here, what happens? A group of parenchymatous cells also come and they form a region of cells known as complementary tissue. Please remember, the complementary tissue lies just below the lenticels. It is parenchymatous. And what is the purpose of this lenticel formation in the epidermis? Firstly, it is bound to happen because the epidermis would break at certain places. Secondly, this lenticel is responsible for exchange of gases to the parenchymatous cells which are in the secondary cortex. And of course, the complementary tissue that is present above the cork in proximity to the epidermis and at the places where the epidermis has broken down. So this is what the lenticel is for. The purpose of lenticels is the exchange of gases that has to take place and it is present in the epidermis. It is present in the bark of course. The bark which is broken at places is because of the presence of lenticels which are meant for gaseous exchange between the cells which are present outside the vascular cambium, the newly formed cells. They also need gases for their uh, functioning and that gaseous exchange is made, met by the lenticels which are formed. The term complementary tissue is to be remembered. They are parenchymatous. This is also to be remembered. And one thing you have to remember is that the bark of Quercus super, it's a plant. It's a scientific name usually found in Macedonian, not Macedonian, Mediterranean regions that is around near Spain and uh, um, that uh, Italy. You find this tree that is responsible for giving the commercial cork. The cork that is uh, responsible for making uh, cricket balls and the cork which is present in the wine bottles and champagne bottles that you often find that cork is obtained from this particular tree because this is the tree that gives the commercial cork okay now moving further what about the commercial furniture because the furniture comes from plants because the plants form the wood by 
xylem that is vascular cambium is responsible for all the furniture that you have in your houses that vascular cambium gives rise to secondary xylem and that secondary xylem forms the wood now depending on the composition of that secondary xylem what types of cells are present we have two types of woods first is heart wood you know our heart lies inside the body so that part of wood which lies inside the trunk that would form the heart wood first thing that is to be remembered second thing is that it is darker in color don't confuse it with spring wood and autumn wood this is hard wood it is darker in color this is primarily second xylem uh, secondary xylem that we are talking about darker in color and it is much durable and resistant secondly it is having another name that is known as duramen so you can remember from the name because it is durable so it is named as duramen secondly we have elburnum and i write this name this this and this duramen and elburnum these both names are used together otherwise like heartwood it is known as sapwood okay now why do we use the word sapwood because it is having larger size cells which are not dry heartwood is dead wood wood is of course dead but it is having mostly the dead cells sapwood is having living cells which have higher water content all right so because it is having higher water content it is having larger size cells it is lighter in color so these parts are to be learnt not parts these aspects of the hardwood and sapwood are to be learnt of course hardwood would form the furniture of your houses because it is resistant to insect infestation and microorganism attack the sapwood which is lighter in color otherwise known as elburnum is having living cells most of its uh, cells are living this is having dead cells and why it is darker in color because it is having dead cells which are highly crushed so another thing that you have to remember is that in the hardwood there are crushed cells and there are dead elements now these dead elements which are highly crushed are highly lignified they are crushed they are dark why they are dark because they are highly lignified why they are resistant and what is the purpose of them getting lignified they are highly lignified and they have organic compounds stored in them what sort of organic compounds would be stored in them organic compounds like oils aromatic substances gums resins tannins phenols and of course colored substances all these substances are responsible for giving it a resistance to insects so this is what you have to learn in the secondary growth in a dicot stem and the extra features that it had that there was presence of bark there are lenticels which are present complementary tissues to be remembered and what is the difference between hardwood and sapwood we are talking about secondary xylem over here the two types of woods which are formed why there is a distinction and what is responsible for high durability of this type of wood so i hope now that you have understood the four different steps what is formed as a result of secondary growth you have to remember all the points you have to see a plant in practicality if you can so uh, that you can relate with the secondary growth in a better way if you cannot relate then last option that you have is you just have to cram all the facts and that is the only way so do keep in mind the new terms that you have come across and of course the steps which have taken place at the physiological level